My name is Moji. I'm a monster. Oh yeah. In today's video, I would love to share some stories with you. And these stories have to do with the progression of the disease and some of the strategies that I use to manage the mental health kind of sanity side of dealing with this disease as it progresses. If you haven't seen my uh, eight and a half year progression video, I'll put a link to it in the description down below, or you can click in the corner and watch that and come back to this. I just don't want to repeat what I've already said. There might be a little bit of that, but that video is totally relevant. In particular too, I go into some more detail about my views on depression, the depression that I've had in the past and how just something clicked in here in a good way that um, just kind of snapped me out of being depressed. And recently I got a comment on one of the videos where essentially this, this person's comment, it sounded very frustrated. Basically said, this is what it says, it's been along the lines of like, I don't know why everyone's so happy they're not being honest about, you're not being honest about it because um, it just keeps getting shittier and shittier for me or you know something along those lines. And you know, and, and I, I mentioned, of course, you know, my God, like these videos that I do are not all like uh, sunshine and, and roses for sure. I mean, I talk about depression. I do talk about, you know, my struggles, but at the same time, I just think it is so, it's like, it's so important for, for people with Parkinson's especially, I think to manage stress and, and depression because we are gonna find ourselves in more situations than your average person. I think that could be um, uncomfortable, uh, in, in, anxiety inducing, I mean, all sorts of things. And because of that, I really believe that we need to have what I call our, our mental health ninja. I understand that frustration. So um, I thought too that you know you guys are always so wonderful with your comments and I, I do know that people who watch these videos read those comments. So if you have any tips and strategies that you use to kind of help you manage um, the mental health and, and how do you stay happy? Um, you know, what are your tips for people who are struggling with um, a progressive disease and trying to kind of keep their head above the water? Yeah, so please share some of your wisdom. And as always, thank you for watching these videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I just I want to say thank you as always for um, checking them out and uh, for you know being part of this community <laughs> that none of us want to be part of. That sounds so weird, but okay. Anyways, so there were two concerts, and the first concert. I mean, nobody wants to be in this situation. Oh wait, wait, wait I got to tell you the story first. <laughs> okay, hold on. See, it's like sometimes my mind just moves too fast. It's like, goes ahead of where, you know. Anyways, the first story I want to share is from when I was a kid. And this is like, it's probably one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten. Um, it's, it's up there anyways. And it's, it's, it was relevant when I was a kid and it's totally relevant now. So this is the story. I um, had, I was staying overnight at a friend of my grandmother's house. A friend, a friend of my grandmother's. I love this woman. She had the coolest townhouse and she had these stairs that ran along the wall. And this is what they looked like. And so I was playing, playing with her dog and her dog goes running through the, the vacant space between the stairs. And underneath the stairs, she had like a little office nook. And so I'm like, oh, as a kid, I'm just like, I'm gonna squeeze through there too and chase it. And I got stuck and I freaked out so like I couldn't go forward because of my I think it was my hip bones and I couldn't go back because of my ribs and the thank goodness they weren't hardwood like they are in the picture but like they were carpeted but like I mean I freaked out I was like stuck in between these two stairs and this woman her name was Chris she said to me Jennifer you have to calm down if you do not calm down, we cannot get you out. And it took me probably about like 10 minutes. I mean, as you can imagine, I'm like hyperventilating. I'm freaking out. And so anyways, she was totally right. As soon as I calmed down, I was able to just relax and get out of, you know, being stuck in the stairs. I feel like that's really helpful um, of a lesson in 
you know, in my restaurant career, it was super helpful. But like, especially with Parkinson's because, you know, like, what do you do when you have these moments? Like, you know, that you freeze and you can't walk and there's like thousands of people around you. Um, like that happened to me twice. Um, you know, and I, I just, I just don't care. I don't look, I apologize to my friends. I say, sorry, you know, I'm moving slow, but, but they know. And I also think though that sometimes it's really important to kind of, um, how do I say this? Cause I mean, my friends have actually been really great, but I can see like a little bit of in their eye, like the fear or the worry or the concern. And I think too, that's another reason it's so important for us to have these tools to keep our cool in situations like that, not freak out, and then not like go into like a dark place, you know, that like my life is over now, I can't go to concerts anymore. The main difference with the progression in terms of a year and a half is that I'd say that, you know, the way that I define my moments, or like Parkinson's events or incidents or whatever, um, is that they've become more frequent. But like what I say though, when I say that, there's like daily stuff, like right now, I'm, I'm, I'm off. And if I needed to, to walk, um, I would have a really hard time doing it. Now, so for example, the three little incidents that I just wanted to kind of really briefly go over, like two of them involved concerts. So two of them were concerts, um, and there was alcohol and there was lots of food involved too. So like, um, you know, I had a couple of beers, and then uh, one one of the concerts, I had had two sidecars from, oh my God, and they were so good, from the Taddy Grill, but then we, I also had like, God, we have like we shared like a crab wee salad and then some like, like a, oh, so, oh, it was like a seafood, it was like a fish with, oh, mashed potatoes and vegetables. It was so good, but I had a lot of food in my stomach. So, you know, um, I'm indulgent like that. And I guess I'm willing to take those risks sometimes when I possibly shouldn't. But, you know, at the same time, I've done those same kind of things in other, during other concerts and haven't had a problem. So it's just, um, in the first one that, that it happened, like the hot sun was blazing on me, the message that I, the email that I had had with the tickets that my friend sent me to this concert, my password into Ticketmaster wouldn't work even though I took a photo of it. I mean, like I did a screenshot, I had all of my stuff prepared, but it just wasn't cooperating. So it's like, you can find yourself in these moments where you are prepared, you've done, You've done what you can to reduce the likelihood that you'll find yourself in an uncomfortable spot. But um, there I was, you know, like in the blazing sun, just sweating like out of control. And then like, I can feel everyone staring at me and I just don't want, you know, to make eye contact with that. And I do think that most people, it's kind of like, um, what do they call that? Like when people drive uh, rubberneckers or something like there's, there's like a little bit of that. I think that was kind of going on. And, and it's fine, you know, like I think more than, more than not, often than not, it comes from a place of concern and people want to make sure that, you know, people are okay and, you know, yeah, they want to look and, um, but yeah, I didn't, I don't engage, I don't look, you know, when I'm experiencing those moments. So that's one of like my, preve like prevent myself from, you know, panicking. And then, you know, I got really, I, I just, I don't know if I've just been lucky but everybody I've encountered has always been super understanding and super helpful. Like a security guard redid my password for me on my phone. Um, my friend was super sweet. I could tell that he was maybe a little bit more panicky than me, but you know, he, he kept his cool, but I did it. And then I ended up seeing like the most amazing concert. Lucinda Williams opened up for Big Thief and talk about amazing. Lucinda Williams had a stroke. She can't play, play guitar anymore, but she needed you know, someone to walk her off stage. And that woman is still going. And pardon my French, but she's like, fuck it. I love music. I love performing. I'm going to find a way to do it. And I, that's the spirit I want to channel like within myself. And it's not easy, but you know, having a community like we have here helps me so much. But I do feel like you know, maybe like for me, this like eight and a half, 10 years for sure, is kind of like that turning point where, I mean, I my 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 uh, movement disorder specialist MDS had brought up in 2020. I remember this conversation distinctly. She brought up a DBS. I instantly shut that conversation down. I didn't want to contemplate it. I didn't want to think it. Nope, I don't want it. Don't want to even hear about it. She just backed off instantly. No, no problem. 
you know. But as much as it still scares me, we actually, the last time that we talked, which was two weeks ago, um, we talked about it. I asked questions. I was actually open to it for the first time, or at least talking about it. So those are some of the changes that have happened in the last year and a half. I'm 48 now, and um, you know, last December, so December was last month, it's January 2024 when this video is being made. And in December of 2023, the end of last year, that was my 13, not 13, my 10 year um, anniversary from my diagnosis. I was diagnosed in 2013, so. And it's hard to gauge too, because like where I'm at in 10 years, somebody else might not, might be in a better place. They might be worse. We're all just, you know, we're all kind of on our own path and yet there's really no roadmap. So it's like, that's, a, that's another reason too, I feel like, you know, um, I'm just such a believer in that mental health ninja. And for me, part of my healthcare team, look at that. Oh, you can see my medicine kicking in, right, Moji? Like, so my cognitive behavioral therapy, she's part of my healthcare team. Like when I'm having something go wrong, I call her and she's able, you know, to get me an appointment and then kind of talk me through my struggles. And just because like, you know, um, you know, I, I am happy, doesn't mean that I don't have periods of darkness. Like, so for example, this fall back really hit me hard. And over the holidays, there was like this like 20 something day stretch where I just felt like the sun just never came out. And I was really, I'd say down in, in, in the dumps and, 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 you know, being able to pull yourself out. It's like, it's, we all need to maybe go there or feel those feelings sometimes, but I think that the danger lies in not being able to get yourselves, ourselves out of those funks. And so that's where I think that the mental health ninja comes in, any tips that you have, having a therapist um, and a good perspective, because like when you encounter those moments, like, you know, when you're with your friends and things go haywire, if you do panic and freak out, I'm, I'm sure so many of you already know, but it just makes the situation so much worse. And then it just, you know, that snowball effect of that is, um, you know, it might keep you in the situation, that, the uncomfortable situation that you're in even longer. So like arming ourselves with these tools and techniques and, and beliefs or, you know, whatever it is that we can, you know, pull from our pocket and from, you know, our, our brain to, um, to you know, manage those moments without panicking and just doing the bet and doing the best that we can. But yeah, you know, so two concerts where I had you know kind of issues walking and, and I just really couldn't move, and then you know everything was fine. And then the third the third thing that happened was it was just oh it was such a bad combination. So me and a girlfriend went to go see Sofia Coppola's new movie. Priscilla and at the theater you can have wine and so we were, were having wine and whew, and like once the movie was over I had to go to the bathroom so bad but then of course I totally froze and like there was this moment where I thought I was gonna pee my pants and I had to sit down it's so, like you, you walk down like you've got the seats there was, you know like you like five ten people in the theater it was not that many people you have like the big theater part and there's like a hallway. But I had to sit down because I was worried if I didn't, I would have peed my pants. And then I swear this woman who's like in her 70s comes walking really slowly down the down the walkway. And um, my friend had gone to go get somebody to see if they had a wheelchair. And this, this old woman with her like nurse who's like holding on to her or her caretaker, we fist bumped. You know, I told her I've got Parkinson's, it's all good. You know, I just gotta make some bathroom and and you know, like, yes, those moments suck. You can blame me for those incidents if you want, but like, at the same time, went to that same theater, drank wine, and saw Barbie, and had no problem. So, it's just, you, you never know. And um, the thing is, too, is what was really interesting, so my friend got a wheelchair, she wheeled me to the bathroom, and it was, you know, it was uncomfortable, but again, it's like, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna cry about it. I'm not gonna escalate and panic and make the situation worse. And then what was really interesting was we, we get out to, to see to my car and then of course my car wouldn't start. She needed to jump it. And then the next thing you know, we're both in tears. And she was talking about, you know, how much she wants to help me and be there for me. And, and it was like a really 
touching moment too because at the same time like I realized how stoic you know I am and um you know I needed to like I think let her in and or how do I say this like you know, yeah, like, I mean, I had to open up and show that, like, yeah, I mean, it is really scary. It is, I mean, and then, like, right now, I mean, like, I could cry thinking about it. I just don't want to go there. Not right now. I mean, I have plenty of time to cry about how scary Parkinson's is. But you know what? I'm enjoying this river right now. I'm making this video. I've got my cat right there. And I just, I love life. And... You know, and that is what ultimately makes it so sad. You know, it's just like this, this push and pull, this, you know, like, oh, you know, things are so good, things are so bad, but, you know, I'm trying to find that, you know, um, that zone that, you know, again, where I'm just able to live my best life with this terrible disease that no, none of us want. So, yeah, I guess, I guess that's kind of what I wanted to say for this video. Um, check out the eight and a half year progression one. I mean, like I said, it's still relevant. There are some differences between that in like this year and a half that have happened, but it's it's not super dramatic. I mean, like, you know, how do we define dramatic as well? And what were um, our tolerance levels? You know, like somebody else might not be able to go to a concert and be stared at by like thousands of people as they walk by, you know? I mean, just like, it was awful. You know, and like, um, not fun. The biggest cat ever. The biggest cat ever. Her name is Moji. Good girl, thank you.